Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're also going to stick to my home county of Skåne here in the very south of the country. So we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years. A couple of different styles, but I think it is most definitely fair to say that this brewery is best known for the different kinds of modern, Nordic, fruity, juicy, Berliner Weisse, Goze, Smoothie, whatever you want to call them, sour beers. But the beer we're going to have a look at today is one of their latest releases. It was also the first one that I bought outside of Sweden, and it's a bit different compared to what we've had from them before, so it really did kind of pique my interest. So needless to say, I'm very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer, hopefully it makes for an interesting review, and as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head down to Arluf, which is a little bit to the southwest of me here in Lund, and to the northeast of Malmö, where I work uh, sometimes, and we're going to have a look at another beer from the wonderful Elm Eleven. So this particular beer is called Tourist In Your Own Life. It comes in at 6% ABV and they're describing this one as a blackcurrant and passion fruit coconut cake sour ale. So uh, yeah, this beer is a little bit different from the other ones we've had from Elm Eleven in the past, most of which have been listed as gozes or fruited sours. But according to Untapped, this one is a pastry sour. So that kind of caught my interest, as well as the fact it was an Elm Eleven beer that I hadn't tried before. I'm not sure if this one will come through Sea Stembo Lager a little bit later on, but uh, yeah, you know, I really enjoy trying all the different beers that are available from, uh, from Elm Eleven. But yeah, let's crack on with this one and see what we have. This beer, incidentally, was bought at the Beer Hive in Amar in Copenhagen, where I get most of my Danish things, and this one just happened to be on the shelf at the same time so big shout out to jessica and nicolina of course check out the link to their facebook page in the description below but let's crack on with this one then and see what we have so as always with my reviews then i'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting though just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that i've done from L11 in the past and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the support that you give is massively appreciated and remember you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system just use the search bar put your hometown state county province prefecture in if i've reviewed beers from your local area they should pop up Otherwise, you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in the Swedish playlist along with many other things. And that is, of course, being added to very, very regularly. But let's go on to my brewery notes then and chat a little bit about Elm Eleven before we try this beer. So Elm Eleven, as I've mentioned to you before, were originally based in Malmo and the company was founded by Anders Kvist. So he started his brewing project a few years ago, back in 2016, and he says that brewing beer is his sort of artistic expression. But his interest in beer apparently started when his friend bought him what he called a non-industrial lager, and he was just blown away by this, you know, this is what beer could be. And soon after this, his girlfriend bought him a cheap beer kit where you basically added the water, and he just kind of thought at the time, you know, it must be, um, it must be, quite simple to do things a lot better than this and so it was this that pushed him into actually home brewing and he got further and further into this hobby so he took part in various competitions and then he joined the Minas Et Brewing Collective in the basement of the, the Bishop's Arms Brew Pub in uh, Gustav Al's Toy in Malmö which where I do a few shifts incidentally hence the glass but uh, yeah it was there that he sold his first commercial beers but production was very small over the first few years. He was only producing a few thousand litres. But a while later, he started brewing in the Nerd, Chad and Mila Ulfabuken brewery down in Rosengård. And he had several Sistembo Lager releases over the course of, two, uh, of 2020. But in the early days, he was brewing a number of IPAs and also the kind of fruity sour beers. But later, he started to focus almost exclusively on these big fruity sour beers. But he wants to experiment with a few things in the future. But in March of 2021, a new collective called Molecule was announced, and this includes Elm Eleven, 
Nerd Brewing and also Chad Beer. And these guys now have their brewery in Arlov, which, as I mentioned to you before, is a little bit southwest of Lund and to the northeast of Malmö. And they started off there with a 1,500-litre brew kit. But uh, at the moment, these guys are quite interesting because Molecule, the Molecule Brewery, um, the all the kind of barley wines and stouts, the big malty things are sold under the Nerd Brewing name. All the sour beers are sold under the 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 uh, Elm Eleven name, whereas the IPAs and lagers are sold under the Chad Beer name. The Chad Beer name kind of went out for a little while, but it has been kind of revived, if you like, uh, through brewing lagers and sour beer, uh, through brewing lagers and IPAs and stuff like that. So you can get Chad Beer once again, which is nice to see. Uh, but when it comes to Elm 11 itself, the name Elm 11 is actually taken from where Andrews used to live, which was Alm Batsgat and Elva. Uh, Alm in English is Elm as in type of tree. And this is just something that really stuck with Andrews from his home brewing days. But like I said to you, this brewery is best known for the different kind of fruity, juicy, modern, Nordic, smoothie, whatever you want to call them, sour beers. And as of December 2022, when we're filming this review for you, these guys have produced 80 different kinds of beer and uh, yeah you know what style most of the things are but uh, yeah that is all I can really tell you about Elm 11 for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can of course check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Brew Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that they've done so uh, yeah that is the end of your brewery history section for Elm 11 and Molecule Brewery I guess we can see as well so let's crack on and actually have a wee look at this beer and you can hear my voice is still a little bit weird uh, as well so uh, yeah this one as we said earlier this beer is called Tourist in Your Own Life comes in at 6% ABV black currant and passion fruit coconut cake sour as always you can see Anders beautiful artwork in this one uh, I really do like his style of artwork actually it reminds me of this band from Stockholm called Atoma which is an Iranian guy and he does all these kind of ambient metal sort of things really just beautiful actually it would be cool if they did a collaboration beer at some point but there you can see the Elm 11 rocket which is their symbol tourist in your own life and uh, yeah you know what kind of beer this one is so um <coughs> yeah in the ingredients list it has wheat and oats in it which is common for Elm 11 and you can see it has that nice kind of golden can. So let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm very, very curious to see what this beer is going to have in store for us. We do have another um, Elm 11 sour beer that we need to look at fairly soon. Uh, and that one is a yellow sour. I enjoy the Elm 11 yellow sours. Um, I'm so really looking forward to that. But I think that's enough for us at the moment just to take a wee look at the beer. And see what we have so <clears throat> yeah anyway uh, as you can see this beer has kind of has poured pretty much exactly as we would expect from something um, that we from the you know it's poured exactly as we do, as we would have expected of something from Elm 11 those were the words I was looking for brain is not working but yeah you can see this beer has poured with um, about a one-third finger of a frothy kind of cream pink I would say kind of pink colored head on this one you can see that there for yourself it does look very very nice but uh, yeah the color of this beer is absolutely a sort of maroon burgundy sort of thing heart of Midlothian football jersey as I would say it's kind of like that but uh, yeah not much in the way of visible carbonation with this one one or two bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there, but the head incidentally has faded away to just be a very, very thin foamy layer, but there's a thicker ring around the edge of the glass. But overall, it does look very, very nice. Um, but yeah, not too much in the way of visible carbonation with this one. As I say, in terms of colour, it's got that nice kind of um, burgundy, Heart of Midlothian football jersey sort of thing to it. So remember, when it comes to the colour of your beer, it depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised, thus you get a dark coloured beer. But any barrel agent that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will affect the colour of the beer too. When it comes to the kind of modern sour beers like this, yeah, that is going to play a big role. Most of the colour you get in this one will be from the black currants, the passion fruit, I think will play a slight role, but, you know, not overly much, to be honest with you. 
But um, yeah, appearance-wise, this one does look very nice. I had to control myself there not to take a big whiff of it because we're going to do that in a second. But you can see this beer does have a good level of haze to it, which you would expect from one of these kind of modern sour beers. That will be down to the oat and wheat content in this beer. But yeah, it looks great, as we said earlier, not too much in the way of visible carbonation. So yeah, let's go for it and have a wee look at the aroma of this one and see what it has in store for us. That does look very, very nice. Oh, I say it looks very nice, it smells very nice. Um, in honesty, I have to admit with this beer, I was actually a little bit apprehensive going into this one when I, I, I mean, and I bought it because it was Elm 11, but when I looked at it, on uh, on untapped and sort of a pastry sour is like mm, you know I'm not a great fan of pastry sours generally speaking, um but I'm going to say this does not smell too different from what we've had from Elm Eleven in the past so positive signs so far, um yeah this one it kind of has everything that I would expect of of an Elm Eleven beer I always enjoy it every month I always you know these guys usually release at least one beer through Sea Snubble Lag every month, and I always enjoy it when it's time for the Elm 11 review. But when it comes to this one, this really does smell quite similar to what we've had in the past. There's not a lot um, that strikes me as being different in the aroma here. It's got that lovely kind of fruity juiciness to it, a little bit of the sour character in there, but you've also got that big Elm 11 creaminess that you expect. Yeah, you do get a little bit of the coconut. You know, you've got a little bit of that placebo green effect to it. Um, but yeah, really does not strike me as being different uh, too much, if that makes sense, to what we've had from Elm 11 before. So, <coughs> pardon me, yeah. I do really like how this beer, um, I do really like how it goes together in that sense. Um, yeah. It's big juicy fruity notes to this one. It smell it smells absolutely lovely. And as I say, this is one of the things I love about the Elm 11 beers. They're just big, juicy, fruity, and they taste great. They're quite straight shooting in a lot of ways, but they just are very nicely done. Let's break this aroma down for you though and describe it a wee bit more in depth. So backbone of the beer, you get a little touch of that kind of fresh white bready bread crust. That is absolutely in there. So yeah, a little bit of fresh white bready bread crust. And on top of that, there's a few other things going on. Um, so yeah, the, the fresh white bready bread crust, there's a tiny little bit of um there's a tiny little bit of a kind of woody character to this one. I'm getting little notes of that in there. I almost get a little touch of vanilla out of this beer as well, which is kind of interesting. So yeah, fresh white bread bread crust, little hints of wood and vanilla, and above that you get this big kind of creamy yogurty sort of thing. There's a lot of kind of petit filou yogurty vibes to this beer um but below that you get a little bit of a kind of fresh white bread you can absolutely get some of that you can smell the wheat kind of thickening out the beer and there is a little touch of you do get a little touch of wheaty bitiness in the back of the nose but i would point out that that's very minimal a lot of the kind of creamy oaty the oats that are in this beer certainly aid in giving you this impression of like a kind of creamy petty filou yogurty type thing that absolutely comes out in this beer 100% to me the coconut is actually very subtle in this one you can smell the coconut a little bit more toward the front of the nose so you have mixing in with the vanilla and the wood and stuff you can smell that wee bit of coconutty character but yeah really the the, the backbone of this beer the malty and yeasty side of things is very um yeah, yogurty and petty filou like which we've seen from Elm 11 many times before but you know we still enjoy it of course and on top of that um there is a little touch of like a Werther's original butter candy butterscotchy sort of thing but you know it's not overly prominent there is just a little touch of that kind of butter candy butterscotchy sweetness to this beer and I'm not going to complain about that at all because I think it goes well with everything else that's in there so the coconut as I said is quite subtle in this uh, in this beer for me um <coughs> yeah i like it i really do like how this goes together um yeah when it comes to the green component of the beer um 
as we said before, Elm 11 tends not to use hops in their beer because there's this whole debate between sour beer brewers, you know, if you add hops it takes away a bit from the sourness, there's no need to do it. But at the same time you can argue it gives you a bit more depth to your beer. Elm 11 are one of the ones on the side of not using the hops. Um, but still, this beer gives you a little bit of that kind of green placebo effect. So there's a little touch of grassiness to the beer, a little touch of floral character. And you've also got a wee bit of... Um, you do have a little tiny bit of earthiness in there, but to me it's mainly a kind of grassy, floral sort of thing coming out of this one. So the way that that goes together, I think, is very, very nice in that sense. Um, yeah, I like it. I do like how this goes together. So on the... Um, yeah, on the... I don't think we need to say any more about the green, the sort of green placebo effect in this beer. But on the fruity side of things, it is kind of what you'd expect. The black currants you get in this beer are actually quite tart, and they smell quite complex in a way. Because I would wonder from if I was to smell this beer blind, I'd probably think you know there's a bit of black currant, blackberry, <coughs> pardon me, blueberry or something like that in it. So you've got the black currants in there, obviously, but you've got some candied strawberry. You've got a few other berry kind of things going on in this beer, which I do really like. Um, so, yeah, you've got some nice, you know, juicy, fruity notes in this one. But you also have a little bit of that passion fruity note in there. And there's a wee touch of dried apricot as well. You can smell the more tropical side to this. Um, you can certainly smell the more tropical side to this beer, but I like it. I really do like how... Um, how that goes together in this um, in this particular beer. So it gets a big thumbs up from me. Um, yeah, it smells... I was thinking this beer, because it was listed as a pastry sour, it might be quite different from what we've had from L11 in the past. But from smelling the aroma, I am now not overly convinced of that. So, yeah, that's not a bad thing. It's always exciting to try something a wee bit different from a brewery that you know, but, you know, having something that you know they've done in the past and they can do well that's never a bad thing either so yeah I'm curious to see what this beer is going to have in store for us so this one is called tourist in your own life a black currant and passion fruit coconut cake sour apparently at six percent abv from elm 11 in arluv here in skona in the south of sweden let's get stuck in slange skull cheers to say once again that's pretty damn nice now I will say first off when I taste this one <coughs> in comparison to the other um, beers that I've had from Elm 11 in the past I can see why people would say this is a bit different it does actually have a little bit more of that kind of pastry sour vibe to it but it's not overly different in that sense this beer, it does have a little bit of a more kind of savoury, umami, whatever you want to call it, vibe. But it still has that big, juicy kind of fruitiness and yogurty character that you expect of an Elma Living beer. So, yeah. Yeah. That is really cool, actually. I like, I do like how this, um, how that all kind of pieces together. Um, yeah, this one, like I say, it does taste a little bit different from what we've had from these guys in the past, but I, I, just, I still quite enjoy it. I have to say, I really do think this is quite, this still, it, it is quite nice. Compared to the aroma, the coconut and the kind of cakey pastry side of things is a lot more prominent than you might think initially, but it works. Yeah, so it gets a thumbs up from me, there's no question about that, but um, yeah. Can't fault this beer at all in that sense. So, 
let's just break this down and describe it for you that wee bit more in depth. Middle third of your palate then, you can feel a little bit, you have a little bit of that kind of bready, bread crusty backbone to this one. You can feel that form of the backbone of the beer. Toward the, the front of that middle third of your palate, there's a little touch of a woodiness in there, a little bit of vanilla, and then yeah, above that you have this sort of oily, cakey sort of vibe to this one. You know like the, I don't, I can't remember if you get these in Sweden, I never really eat coconut candy, but um, yeah, it has a little bit of that kind of bounty taste. There's a little bit of an almost kind of cakey layer in there, like a, you know, as to say pastry, you've got a little bit of that kind of savoury layer sitting on top of the bread crust. And within that, particularly toward the front of the middle third of your palate, you certainly do get that vibe of coconut. So yeah, there's a lot of that going on in this one. Um, so yeah. The fruity character in this one kind of complements that quite well. But yeah, the, the malt base in this one, I think it's fair to say it's certainly nowhere near as creamy and yogurty and sweet as we've had in the past. Like I say, you've got the bread crust, you've got a bit of a the bread crust, you've got a bit of that woody character in there, then you've got this almost kind of like cakey, pastry, savoury type layer. But on top of that, you start to get a little bit of a kind of white bready note. Although it's maybe more fair to describe it as a kind of wholemealy, brown bready character. There's a mix of wholemeal and white bread in there, but it's a kind of wet bready character in any case. Above that, you get the more dense sweet layer. <coughs> Above that, you get the more dense sweet layer, which is kind of interesting. But then you also have a little bit of, um, you can feel the oats above the kind of wheaty layer, just densifying out the spear. So you've got that nice kind of creamy, oaty sort of thing. Um, so yeah, above, above the kind of wheaty layer, um, you can feel the kind of nice creaminess of the oats and they're very creamy and thick in the middle of the palate. And as you move further out, they give you a little bit more dryness. So you definitely get that in there. And in the dead center of your palate, you've got that big oaty, creamy, uh, no, but you've also got a little bit of Werther's original butter candy, butterscotch. You can feel that in the dead centre of your palate. And as you move further out from the centre of the palate, it gets a little bit kind of sweeter and things as well. Um, so, yeah, I like how that goes together. So... Yeah, definitely. Warther's original butter candy, butterscotch. A little bit of, um, as I say, you get a tiny little bit of biscuit there and all of that sits above that kind of oaty creamy layer. You've got the bread and all the other layers that we've talked about coming out of this one too. But as you move, as I say, toward the front of that middle third of your palate, there's a little touch of a vanilla note in this one. And you start to get the coconut in there as well. So yeah, I think that describes the middle the middle third of your palate in this beer quite nicely. Um, it's very straight shooting this one and I've always said this about the Elma 11 beers. The flavours are always just really nicely done but the beer is still very straight shooting. It's, they're not madly complex these things but they just work really well. So let's focus on the back third of the palate then. So the border region between front third, uh, between middle third and back third of your palate, again you get a little bit of a bready build up in there but the base of the beer You've got a little bit of the bread crust. You do have a little bit of an almost kind of crackery note to this one, but then you've got that kind of pastry sort of savoury layer that we talked about otherwise. Um, but you have a layer of a kind of wholemeal brown bready sort of thing. There's a little bit of a white bready layer as well. And then you can feel the wheat above that just kind of thickening out. On the back third of the palate, you've got a nice thick... Um, you do have a nice kind of thick... Um, smooth wheaty character coming out of this one too but the wheat isn't spicy it really is more kind of smooth rather than anything else and it just densifies the beer above all of that 
you start to get, there is a little touch of a kind of more farmhousey bread, eerie yeasty sort of thing. But yeah, definitely. The, the back third of the palate is, as I've, <coughs> as I've described, a bit of, um, yeah, little touch of bread crust, the kind of pastry layer, a little bit of homeo bread, white bread, the wheat, and then the wee bit of more eerie yeasty character. But absolutely, back third of your palate, you can feel the flavour is really tall. And then as you move further forward, it's just kind of squashed down that little bit and condensed um, and condensed together. So yeah, the malty yeasty side of this beer is quite nicely done. Definitely a bit more savoury than we've had from Elm 11 before, so I can see why people are saying this one is more of a pastry sour than a smoothie sour, if you like. That makes sense. But let's look at the kind of green component this beer has. Um, as we said earlier, this beer doesn't have hops in it and we've talked about why uh, why that is. But in the back corners of the palate, there's teeny, teeny, for me, there's a placebo of a teeny little bit of earthiness, teeny little bit of herbal character. And as you move toward the front corners of the palate, it's just got a little bit of a kind of floral note to it as well. But around the front curve of the tongue, it has a wee bit of a kind of placebo grassy sort of thing. I do just get a little bit of a, a green component out of this beer. But like I say, there's no hops in this one. So that is absolutely placebo effect. This is just me. Remember, beer is always subjective and different people detect different things. But let's look at the fruity side of this one and see what we have. Front third of the palate. So, front third of the palate then. The border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you get a nice little bit of bready build up in there. You can feel a nice little bit of white bread. Then you've got the base of that front third of your palate. It's a little bit smoother, a little bit more white bready. It almost has a bit of woodiness to it as well, actually. And like I say, I think that's maybe the oats kind of smoothing the beer out. So you can feel there's a sort of oaty thing and a bit of a woody thing. And there's a wee bit of bready build up there in the border region. But above all of that, you get the kind of fruity, juicy side of the beer. <coughs> and one of the things you have to be aware of is that in these sour beers, whenever you add fruit into the beer as an adjunct, it comes out slightly differently than it would if the fruity flavours were coming from the hops. So the fruity side of things, um, for me, when you take this beer in, it's all about the... Um, it really is all about the the kind of fruity. It, it, it's got a good bit of impact, this one. So a lot of the tartness and stuff that you get from this beer is due to the, um, you know, it's really due to the, the, the blackberry. It, it's black currants in this one, not blackberries. Yeah, it really is due to the black currants in this one. So you get that nice, sharp, tart black currant thing in, but the the passion fruit in this one kind of mellows the whole beer out and you've got a few other things going on as well so on top of that kind of oaty layer on the front third of your palate you can feel the nice soft smooth passion fruit there is a little tiny touch of like an apricot flavor or something in there as well but the more tart flavors kind of sit on top of that so you've got these big tart black currants but then mixing in with that you've got a little bit of a juicy strawberry sort of thing and you've also got that um yeah, you've also got that kind of juicy strawberry, yeah, juicy candied strawberry, a little bit of black berry sharpness, I think. But yeah, main, it's obviously a black currant that's in this one. So there are a few little complexities in this beer as well. So yeah, the way it goes together, I think is really, really nice. So um, yeah, interesting beer, this one, from the flavour perspective. As I say, it's a bit more savoury than other beers we've had from Elm 11 in the past, but it's certainly as good as what we've had before um yeah i think that's everything we really need to say about the flavor profile of this one it's, it's quite simple and straightforward in its roots it's the passion fruit that forms the base and at the front of the palate at the very front just behind the kind of front tip of your tongue you've got that sort of sour tart impact from the black currants and you know a few other things going on there as well but it's lovely lovely beer So, yeah, in terms of the, the mouthfeel then, to round off this review, for me, this beer is pushing toward the top end of mid-bodied, bottom end of full-bodied. We know that these Elm 11 beers tend to be pretty damn thick, but yeah, this has got a lovely big 
it's got a lovely kind of um, sort of creamy, yeah, I'd say this is more of a kind of creamy sour beer. This one it is more like a smoothie sour rather than anything else, but it's got a bit of that pastry character underneath it. So yeah, big kind of thick, creamy pastry sour mouthfeel, top end of mid-bodied, bottom end of full-bodied, smooth carbonation. I do like it. In terms of IBUs, I'm pretty sure this one will be technically zero IBUs, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's like five or something in it. Um, <coughs> pardon me. But yeah, the malt base in this one, very, very smooth, good little bit of sweetness to it and things from the adjuncts. It goes together very well. But you've also got these nice kind of juicy fruity notes of this one. It's not an overly tart sour beer, this one. But uh, yeah, the way everything goes together is quite nice. You've got a good balance between the tropical fruit. The tropical fruit lingers there into the aftertaste, whereas the berry fruit gives you the tartness early on. And it does linger and give you a bit of juiciness into the aftertaste too. But for me, a really interesting beer, this one, and I'm glad that I got to try it. So yeah, gets a big thumbs up from me. So yeah, this was the Tourist In Your Own Life, a 6% uh, blackcurrant and passion fruit coconut cake sour beer from Elma Levin in Arlov, just outside of Malmö, here in Skåne, in the south of Sweden. So uh, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Elm 11 as well. And we will no doubt return to these guys very soon. I do have a yellow sour to review from them quite soon as well, which I'm certainly looking forward to. But uh, yeah, until the next time, slange it, school. Cheers. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys later very, very soon. Check out my social media, check out theirs. Catch you later.